It is another day's journey, and we are more than excited about it. God has been good because of his goodness, because of his grace, because of his mercy. We have another chance to be inspired another day. You're on the New Birth platform somewhere. You're watching us on one of our campuses, whether you're on our Facebook campus, whether you're on our YouTube campus, on our website, our app, or watching us in replay. Welcome and thank you for your support and your participation. Our senior pastor is none other than the one and only Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. And we are always humbled as our pastoral team to be able to come to you five days a week for Daily Inspiration. I'm your pastor of Internet and Innovation, Kurt Vance Ross, and it's time to get into your Daily Inspiration. Facebook, thank you for being who you are. If you would hit the share button and share this to your platforms right now, if you would tag by using the ad symbol, uh, about three people, if each one of you tag one, you're gonna help us spread the gospel beyond our wildest imagination. If you're on YouTube, thank you for tuning in. If you would text somebody the link uh, to this particular inspiration and let them know that inspiration is coming your way. And I just appreciate each one of you all for your consistency, for your prayers, and for your support. I wanna get right into our segment, right into our message. So much has been going on in our country and for me, this message is apropos to everybody you know. So anybody that's needing daily inspiration right now, connect with them and let them know that it's time to get into our segment. If you're ready, do what you know we do and just type in the comments, I'm ready. I see you, thank you so much. I see your comments, I appreciate you. Thursday is guaranteed to be a great day, so let's make it exactly what it's designed to be. If you go with me to the book of Lamentations, Lamentations, chapter 3, book of Lamentations, chapter 3, and we're going to look at two verses, verses 21 and 22, and it will set up the context of our uh, inspiration for the day. Lamentations, verse 3, or chapter 3, verse 21 through 22, and it reads, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. I brought it back to my memory. I recalled it. Therefore, I had hope. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. That's what the King James Version of the Bible says. And for the few moments that I've been allotted, I want to talk from this thought I'm on my period. You heard me. I don't want you to type it in the comments. I, uh, you, it'll make sense if you stay with me and stick with me. I'm on my period. In uh, his best-selling book, The Tipping Point, uh, one of my favorite authors, Malcolm Gladwell, defines the terminology tipping point as that magic moment when an idea, a trend, or social behavior crossed a threshold, tips, and then spreads like wildfire. It's that moment where in the magic of the moment, an idea, a trend, or a social behavior crosses a threshold, tips, and then it spreads like wildfire. It is at that moment that a tipping point seemingly enters the third leg of a relay race and immediately hands the baton off to your star. Much like what you've seen go on in the Gulf Coast, what you've seen go on in New Orleans that we're praying for our brothers and sisters in these spaces. The tipping point, once it has met its threshold, often pushes you and I into a storm. One of the greatest examples of a tipping point because there are both positive and negative tipping points. And I want you to make note of it. A tipping point can be good or positive. A tipping point can be bad or negative. And one of the examples of a positive tipping point 
is engulfed in the story of the American classic about the brush suede shoe company known as Hush Puppies. Some of you all are not old enough to remember or even know about Hush Puppies, but the brand had its tipping point somewhere between the late 1994 and the early 1995 year. Up to this point, the brand had ceased to be relevant. Sales were down and the shoes were limited to a few outlets and some small family stores. But in 1994, when the sales of Hush Puppies were down to 30,000 pair a year, the executives were prepared to allow the company to fold when they surprisingly were informed that a few urban youths in downtown Manhattan begun wearing these shoes again, suddenly triggering a chain reaction that spread to several high-end fashion designers who were now adding the shoes as accessories to their runway fashion show simply because some urban youths decided to start wearing it and made it cool again. Urban individuals in inner city neighborhoods caught the attention of fashion designers and they put them on their runway shows. And as a consequence, the tipping point spawned a storm. And soon every mall in America was selling hush puppies again. And it's interesting in the subsequent year of 1995, the, the company sold, get this, where they were only doing 30,000 a year the prior year, in the year when they had the storm or the positive tipping point, they sold 430,000 pairs of shoes worldwide, four times the amount of the prior year. In 1996, Hush Puppies won the prize for best accessory at the Council of Fashion Designers Award Dinner. The president of the company was noted by allowing others to understand that a tipping point happened and changed the trajectory of their entire business. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, that in this moment of, of, of inspiration, to make an epidemic and a tipping point occur through a storm, whether positive or negative, Malcolm Gladwell identifies that there are three rules that make this possible. And if you would use this moment to take notes, and I want to hire a scribe in the comments to highlight what it takes to make sure you get a tipping point in the positive dynamic. Number one, it's called the first concept is called the law of the few. The first concept is the law of the few. Get this. It requires human communication via word of mouth. And through that, the marketing is now spreading information that will become beneficial. The few is made up of people called connectors. These are the people who bring people together. These are mavens. These are teachers, students. These are salespeople, persuaders. So to get the storm in a tipping point, moving in a positive direction, you need the law of the few. That's the first one. The second law that is required for this epidemic or this storm to move towards a positive tipping point, you would need the stickiness factor. The stickiness factor, which is the concept of retention and comprehension. You have to show people how and why they need to keep coming back over and over and over again. You got to get them stuck. You got to get them connected. You got to get them tied in. Because once they're stuck, even when stuff starts going wrong, when the storms of life start raging, they will stick with you because you're stuck on them. So number one, you have the law of the few. Number two, you have the stickiness factor. Thirdly, you have the power of context. You have the power of context. Recognizing that the smallest details of your immediate situation immediately affect your behavioral response. 
this is where I'm going to start pitching my tent because based off of the power of your context, you're going to be able to determine that there were some small details that led to your immediate situation becoming a storm and a category four. And it created a behavioral response that determined how you would see the circumstance. The conflict in this concept is for every positive tipping point, there is a negative tipping point. You gotta understand that for everything that happens in your life in this moment of inspiration, everything that happens in your circumstance, it can go from simply being a thunderstorm that was beneficial to cool off your day, that was beneficial to watch stuff grow that you've planted, that was beneficial to wash away some negativity. And based off of the circumstance, this thunderstorm could become a hurricane. Somebody knows what it feels like, not just in the physical standpoint, but you feel like you are going through your hurricane Ida. You feel like based off of the circumstance that you are going through so much that what was a small storm and based off of the occurrences of your life and your situation and your friends and who you are connected to, what was a small Hur a thunderstorm has now become a hurricane and you are trying to evacuate, you're trying to get away, you're trying to pick up your bags and leave because you're at your tipping point and somebody in the comments, somebody in the place is going to be able to testify, Pastor, I'm at my tipping point. I don't know if I can go another further. I don't see this as a positive. It seems like everything is a negative. I can't keep going in this manner. I'm losing every day. I'm going deeper and deeper in depression. I am in the space where I don't even want to deal with these folks. I don't want to be connected to these Negroes. I don't want to be connected to these Negrets. I am tired. I'm at my tipping point and I can't take nothing else. If you're there, this moment of inspiration is for you because I never want to see you in the space where you allow your storm to keep you from God's outstretched hand of mercy. Because your storm, as the old folks say, is getting ready to pass over. You ought to shout hallelujah because this storm is not going to stay always. I've never seen a storm that didn't pass. And you are at your tipping point, but because you think it's negative, I came to encourage you. This is a positive tipping point. This thing is getting ready to turn in your favor. And in our passage today, I help us realize I've been clear to help you get the information and get the good word that the smallest changes in our lives that seem extremely large and singular in nature push us into a tipping point that allows God to step into our storms thereby making the next verse in our life the cure for all our issues and here Jeremiah the weeping prophet for 20 verses has been at his tipping point you read it when you get a chance. From verse 1 to verse 20, he complains about how bad the situation is. He complains about how frustrated he is. He complains about everything that has gone wrong. He talks about how much trouble he's in. He talks about how the scarecrows are putting him in a position where the skin and bones on his flesh are being torn asunder. He can't take it no more. He is found that God has manacled his hands and shackled his feet. He finds himself where he's pleading out to God to help him. And for 20 verses, he talks about how God mishandled him, how God mistreated him, how God allowed this stuff to happen. And at the end of verse 20, there's a period. It is a punctuation that stops it. It is the end point. He is on his period. His period is his tipping point. And when he gets to his period, the next verse says, but I start thinking about it. And when I had a flashback, 
I had to forget about all that had gone through my storm, all the stuff that had frustrated me, all the stuff that pushed me to my tipping point, all the stuff that made me evacuate. And when I got on my period, right after the period, I realized that it was because of the Lord's mercies that I had not been consumed. And when you're on your period, when you get to that point that everything has stacked up against you and you are ready to throw in the towel after the period, God's mercies are there. And I want to encourage you. You're at your tipping point. You're getting ready to take off. Your sails are about to go through the roof. And before you give up, God is about to add more to it. And when you think about it, you'll realize God is really, 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 really been good to me. I'm out of my time. Thank you so much for yours. I appreciate you. I pray that the storms of life stop raging so that you can get to your period and look back on everything that you've come through and recognize if it wasn't because of God and his mercies that are new every morning, I don't know how I would have made it. And because of that reality, I'm asking you to sow a seed right now. It was when he got to verse 21, that stuff changed and he recognized it. So I'm asking you, everybody, to sow a $21 seed. I need you to prompt her on the bottom of the screen. I want you to not hesitate. I want you to put your seed in the ground knowing that your storm is getting ready to pass over. If you feel like this is too small of a seed, do 210. Do 2100. Do 21,000. But put your seed in the ground. More importantly, you cannot get off your period if you're not connected to the God who stops storms so that you can see his providence and his mercy. Right now, I want you to get connected to the God of our salvation. I want you to know that Christ is still the answer for the world today. And I need you to go to joinnewbirth.org. And if you would just go there, we're waiting for you to get connected to the New Birth family. We are on our period and we realize how good God really is. And if you need prayer, wherever you are, if you just email us at prayer at newbirth.org, we're praying for you. Our intercessors are there and we are taking your prayers and connecting our faith to yours and sending them up to the master. I'm grateful for you. I know that your storm is getting ready to pass over. We're praying for everybody in the Gulf Coast. We're praying for everybody in the area of New Orleans. We're praying for people in Haiti. We want to keep you lifted and know that your new birth family loves you. We got a big weekend coming up. We're getting ready for our pull up this Labor Day weekend. It's an all white party. These announcements are just for you. So don't go anywhere. I got these announcements. Share. You know, I know you. I need you to share right now. I need you to tag some people, text some people, stay where you are. These announcements are for you. I love you. There is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Realize your storm is getting ready to pass over. Have a drama free, virus free remainder of the week. And I'll see you when I see you. Peace. Hey, New Birth, it's time for our video announcements. Our Call to Conquer bookstore is going all out for their Labor Day storewide sale. Please stop by and take advantage of some awesome deals, including 25% off of all non-sale items. Also, they will be on the lawn for our pull-up service on Sunday, September 5th. Have you seen the new New Birth t-shirts? They are eye-catching, and they let people know where the best church in town is. New designs and new colors will be available. Don't miss it. Our Words of Life Prophetic Ministry will host its next prophetic training on Saturday, September 4th from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. This virtual session is open to everyone and will be held via conference call. Please visit wearenewbirth.org for more information. Praise and worship begins at 645. New Birth, we are blessed in the city and in the fields. Fred Hammond will be our special guest for our pull-up service. Please join us on Sunday, September 5th at 9.30 a.m. for our communion pull-up. 
What's up, everybody? This your man, Uncle Fred. Listen, I'm actually in ATL right now. Right now, I'm filming a movie right now, but I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'll be back on September the 5th for an all white affair. Pull up and praise New Birth with my man, Dr. Jamal Brown. That's my man's in there. We're going to have a wonderful time. And guess what? If you're not vaccinated, we make that available to you that day. You don't even have to wait. We're going to be there uh, and have an amazing time. Bring your family, bring everybody, and let's get it in. Love you. New Birth is building a creative arts team. We are looking for content developers, editors, graphic designers, worship directors, social media strategists, and imaginative thinkers. Are you social media savvy and a team player? Please submit your resume to jobs at newbirth.org. Our King's Table is open and ready to serve you every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's a no-touch drive through so pull up and pop your trunk if you need free groceries. Also, our intercessors are available to pray with you at our drive through prayer station. Do you miss corporate worship? Join our studio audience for a live recording of our worship services. Registration and confirmation are required. Proof of a COVID vaccine is also required. Please send an email to rsvp at newbirth.org. Seating is very limited. Please make sure you have a confirmation. And that's going to do it for today.